there's a concept in learning known as cognitive load. And simply what it means is that sometimes information can overwhelm our learners. And one of the ways that we deal with that is through what's called chunking, where we take a lot of information and turn it into smaller bits and pieces. And there's a number of ways that you can do this in e-learning. Uh, one such way is to use the concept of a carousel. And today I'm going to show you two different ways that you can do a carousel. And uh, one is a little bit more advanced, but a little more sophisticated. And the other is simple, and I think anyone could probably do that. So let's go ahead and get started here. I have a very basic project on my screen here, just a single slide for right now. And what I've done is I've taken the idea of a carousel. I've chunked out that information into uh, a number of different uh, multi-state objects within this object. I've actually taken it a step further as well and added nice little pills to let the learner know where they are in the information that's being presented. So kind of like a, a progress bar, if you will. And uh, so you can, you can work with this a number of different ways. Let's first of all do the very simple way uh, to, to work with this. So let's first of all select the left arrow over here and go over to my Actions tab. Uh, currently it's set up for no action. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go to the previous state and then it's going to prompt me for which multi-state object. I only have one, so that's the only option that's there. I'm going to leave continue playing the project unchecked because I want to keep users on this slide until they've looked at all the content and are ready to click next. Uh, similarly, we're going to select the right arrow and select go to next state. And then of course, uh, again, it selects the carousel content for you and continue playing the project is unchecked. That's it. That's all you need to do. And let's do a preview of this in HTML5 and see how that works. So you can see here, I've got uh, my content in front of me. And if I click the right arrow, uh, it proceeds to the second of my states in my multi-state object and so on. Continue to do that. I can go backwards and forwards and I can click this all day long. In fact, when I get to the end, uh, because of the way a multi-state object works with this particular action, it will cycle through and start over at the beginning again. And that works quite well. That's a true carousel. Uh, when you think of the term carousel. And when I'm ready to proceed with the rest of my project, I can click this next button at the bottom here. Now, there is, a, of course, a situation where you may run into where a client uh, would like it to be a little bit more linear. They want maybe a very distinct beginning and end. They don't want users to constantly cycle through. And they may also want to hide the left arrow when they're at the first position and hide the right arrow when they're at the last position. And of course, only once uh, they get to the last position do they wish to display the next button. And this is going to require um, a variable to keep track of where you are in the multi-state object, but also uh, two advanced actions, one for this arrow and one for this arrow. And I'll show you how to do those now. So let's start off by doing the left arrow. And I'm going to change it from its current situation being on success, go to next state. And we're going to change that to execute advanced actions. Don't have one so far, but let's create one. Now, this is going to need to be a conditional action. So if you're using uh, Adobe Captivate 2017, make sure you check off the conditional tab. If you're using an earlier version, select conditional action from the drop down menu. In this case here, I'm going to give this one a name and we're just going to call it left underscore carousel. Now we need our tracking variable. I haven't created that yet, but conveniently the advanced action window has a variables button in the bottom right hand corner. So I am going to click that, add new, and we're going to call this V underscore carousel underscore tracker, just a name that's easy for you to remember. And its initial value will be one because we're starting off in the 
first of the multi-state objects within the multi-state object. So we'll set that to be one and we'll hit save and then we can close the variables window. So we're going to look at the, uh, the condition of that variable. So we're going to say if the variable v underscore carousel tracker and in this case here we're going to say because we could be on let's say uh, state number two and navigating to state number one we'll just say if v carousel tracker is and we'll just play it safe here uh, lesser or equal to the literal value of two then we're going to do a couple of things here first thing we're going to do is because we're moving to the first position we're going to hide that left arrow so select the hide command and we'll choose carousel left and i want to point out at this moment that it's really important to label your objects if you are planning on using advanced actions because of course when you're writing your advanced action you need to reference these objects if they're simply labeled uh, smart shape 247 it'll be difficult to remember that that's your left arrow so i've called this carousel underscore left and of course the right is, is similarly labeled uh, so we're going to hide the left arrow we're also going to uh, change that multi-state object to the previous state and there's a command for that it's go to previous state i'm just pressing the first letter of uh, of go to next state or go to previous state on my keyboard here and I can select that and of course then select carousel content again it's labeled properly we're also going to change the value of our of our content tracker variable so we're going to not assign it but rather decrement it which is reducing it it's the opposite of increment and we're going to choose the of course the variable tracker here carousel tracker and by the literal value of one uh, now there is going to also need to be a command not necessarily for when the value is lesser or equal to two but just for consistency i take care of this at the same time i want to make sure that my right arrow is shown so and this is more for uh for other circumstances so I have these four commands here but I also want to make sure I'm covering off the possibilities when carousel tracker is greater than two when I'm on multi-state object three or four or five and I'm pressing the left arrow so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy um, the last three commands I don't want to hide the left uh, under all circumstances but I am going to copy these commands here and then paste them into the else command to cover all the other possibilities of when I might be pressing the left arrow. I'm going to save this as an action, click OK, click close, and now we're going to work on the advanced action for the right arrow. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and change that to execute advanced action. We'll open up our advanced actions window. And we're going to create a new advanced action. Again, this is a conditional action and we're still using that same tracker variable. So we're going to select that. Carousel tracker. In this case, though, we're going to say is greater than or equal to seven. The literal value of seven then we're going to also so in other words if we're going from the seventh position to the eighth position we've seen all the content at this point we want to show the next button to the user so they can proceed with the rest of their project show and like i said before labeling is really helpful when you're trying to find objects and we're going to also hide the right button in this case because of course we don't need to see that because we are on the final uh, situation here we're also going to make sure that that left button is shown and it should be anyway but I like to be I like to err on the side of caution here uh, carousel left 
And we're going to go to the next state of our multi-state object. Oops, I went past it there. Go to next state of carousel content. And we need to update our tracker. So we're going to increment the underscore carousel tracker by the literal value of one. And like I said before, there are situations if the carousel tracker is lower than seven, uh, we're going to want to run most of these commands anyway. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to select the last three commands, copy those, and paste those into the else statement. So they get run um, when you press the right arrow on earlier values than seven. So let's save this as an action. Oh, I forgot to give this an action name. So let's uh, give this an action name right now. Um, what did I call the first one? Left carousel. Let's call this one right underscore carousel. So save as action. Click on close. Make sure you update the uh, the right arrow to be the right carousel advanced action because uh, it's still defaulted to the left action, which is the first action we created. A couple of points, though, I want to make before we, uh, we do this. Of course, we're going to need to make sure that our next button is hidden. We are starting off on the first position, so our left arrow should also be hidden. And keep in mind, too, that because the next button, which previously was my pause um, for this particular slide, I had a pause associated with the next button, but because it's not going to be invisible in output at the beginning, we need something else to pause this slide. And I've just added a small little click box, in this case here, with, uh, with no, I uh, haven't allowed mouse clicking. Uh, but this will pause this slide until... Uh, such time as the user navigates away from it. So we pretty much have everything good to go. Let's do a preview in HTML5. So here's our advanced action version of the carousel. And as you can see, the left arrow is not visible in output and my next button is hidden as well. And of course I can now navigate forward. Now, of course, as soon as I click the first right button, it shows the left arrow. And of course, if I go back, it disappears again. And I can cycle through all of these. And when I get to the end, when I get to the final position, uh, the right arrow disappears. And now my next button is available. And of course, then the user can continue with the rest of the project. Or they could actually go back and continue to review this information if they so choose. But most importantly, now the next button is now visible. And when they're ready, they can proceed with the rest of the project. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com, follow me on Twitter at PaulWilsonLD, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.